Hi guys, Jamie and Sarah here. 2021 was the year of flipping furniture around here and we wanted to share with you guys some of our favorite flips from the year. We have a lot of fun flipping furniture, but our true heart behind it is showing people ways to get ahead financially. If you've watched our channel for any amount of time, you know that pursuing financial independence is extremely important to us. So we love showing you guys different ways to increase your income. And we've had the joy of giving away a lot of our profits this year. I think we're up <laughs> over $1,000 Yeah, that was annoying. cool. <laughs> we have an exciting announcement for you guys. We have been working so, so hard on an ebook, a flipping guide on how to resell almost anything. And we will have that linked below for you. That'll include everything in there that we know about flipping. So there's how to find things, how to price your items, how to write a description, shipping, photography, staging, literally everything I know about flipping up here in my brain, mm -hmm. I gave it to you. It's, so. 40, it's 41 pages long. It took us a long time to put together. So our flipping guide is not about like different types of paint we use and how we do different DIY projects. It's strictly about the reselling process. So if that's interesting to you, if you wanna learn more about that, we highly suggest it. So if you go to the link below and sign up for our email list, you get 20% off. So make sure and do that. So we're super proud of this book. So go ahead and click that link and check it out. Velvet. Woo. <laughs> Sweet. Sarah's favorite color. So we drove 20 minutes to get these chairs, but totally worth it. This lady had them for free on Facebook Marketplace. When we got there, she was like, are you sure you want these? And we were super pumped about them. She said she was going to take them to the dump because she didn't think anybody would want them but they're actually in like really good shape. So orange velvet is huge right now. My favorite for sure. And a lot of people really love it. It's super retro and fun. So we're gonna do our skirt trick and rip off these skirts. And then we're gonna sell them for a big profit. I'm thinking at least $300. We got them for free. So I don't see why we couldn't get at least 100 for each, maybe more. So let's get to it. So once we rip off these skirts, super easy, we'll show you how. They have these really nice mid-century legs underneath. They're super trendy and cool. They make them look a lot more modern. So this one doesn't have the mid-century legs underneath. It has the swivel rocker, but we still do that same trick where we rip it off. It still makes it look more modern. And this one's nice because it's extra cozy because it rocks and bounces and swivels. So um, we're gonna clean these up and rip off the skirts. All right, so this is a really quick and easy process. Um, all you need are some vice grips. Um, we'll link some below, but they, you can find them at any hardware store. Um, and you just grab a corner and rip it, and it comes off really easy. I'll show you how. Um, but this whole process, I'm hoping to have all these chairs done in about 30 minutes. And then if there's any leftover staples, we'll just pull them with these. Um, but you can use any needle-nose pliers or anything, really. So um, let's get started. Ooh. Ooh. So that wasn't quite a good pull because I shredded the skirt, but you wanna grab this piping and pull and you might feel like you're gonna rip the fabric of the chair, but you're not going to. Um, that's just decorative. So you rip it off. May it take you a couple tries to get the first one. So now that I got it started, you can kind of see what it's gonna look like. Um, there's some a bunch of staples in this one and unfortunately they didn't um, pull out. A lot of times they'll come out with the fabric, but that just means we're gonna have to go back through and pull them all, but it'll look nice and clean when it's done. This part, it's kind of a pain. All right, so just as a reminder, we got all three of these orange chairs for free. Um, this first one turned out really well. Um, the staples did take a little longer to tear out than I thought they would. Um, they were kind of stubborn, so it probably took me about an hour to do all three chairs. Um, so they have a really cool orange retro color to them, uh, which is really cool right now. So I think we can get 125 for this chair. Why don't you test it out? All right. Ooh. That's cozy. It kind of feels like it's never been sat in, so I think we'll definitely be able to get 125 for it. These chairs we decided to sell as a pair because they match. Um, if someone really just wants one, I might be willing to do that later, but I'm gonna put them on Marketplace as a pair. Um, we cleaned them up. They're really in excellent condition. There's nothing wrong with them. They really look like they've barely been used. Um, and they smell really good. So once we um, ripped off the skirts of these, they look really nice. So I'm actually listing them at 225 for the pair. 
Um, I think we'd be willing to go down to 200, but I'm gonna see if we can get a little higher number just because they are that really trendy orange right now. So if you are looking to ramp up your flipping game or if you haven't started yet, I've noticed that Marketplace is so busy right now. There is so much free stuff out there and there, or just really cheap stuff. So this wasn't a part of our original thrift haul, but I found this on Facebook Marketplace the other day in a little beach town nearby us. So I quick ran over there to get it. It was $80. I asked her if she'd take 50 and she said yes. It's really beautiful bamboo. The chairs are really unique and cool. They have like just really pretty lines. They came with these cushions, which I'm gonna take off these top ones, leave the bottom, and then just stage it really pretty in our home. Um, I saw comps for this online for around 1500, but I don't know that people actually will pay that for it. So we're gonna ask 300 for locally on Facebook Marketplace. So we really like this piece because it was a simple flip. We're not doing a ton to it. We're not reupholstering or painting, um, and it should still be a pretty good profit for us. Nice. So when I'm going to be taking these photos for Facebook Marketplace, I make sure to take a lot of angles. I'll try to show any imperfections that I find just so that I can be really honest with people. Um, I always let people come and look at it before they buy just so that they can be really happy with it. Um, but yeah, just take lots of angles and just the more pictures the better. All right, so this first piece we paid $40 for and I drove about 45 minutes to get it because I loved it. It's so cute. It just has really beautiful angles. It's solid wood and it has beautiful legs on it. I just love the whole thing. So super excited about it, but it is pretty dinged up. So I think that the paint will be a good addition to cover some of that up. This piece, we're gonna do a two-toned look. So I'm gonna leave some of it original wood and then painting some of it green. So this bottom part will be green, but then we'll be leaving this, the shelves in the background and then also the legs, that natural wood. Um, so I think it'll be a really cool two-tone look. So we're gonna get started and the very first thing I have to do is clean this up really good so that the paint can adhere to it properly. So to clean this thing, I'm gonna do a half vinegar, half water mixture. That's what we do to clean all of our pieces and it works really well. So I have a little bit of wood missing on this piece. So I'm gonna be using this Timbermate wood filler. I like this stuff because it's water-based and it doesn't shrink when it dries. Um, so I'm gonna be filling in that crack so I can paint over it. <laughs> Look at this matches my shirt. It's a pretty adorable color, all right? So now I'm gonna go in all these little crevices with a paintbrush and it says to kind of like dab it to like avoid streaks. So that's what I'm doing. This stuff is, is so crazy. Can you guys see that? Oh, oh, did I get it? Look at that. It's like mud. I've just finished painting this bottom part. I have to do a little bit of work on the top. Um, and it says to let it dry for two to four hours before the next coat. So that's what I'm gonna have to patiently wait and try to do. So I finished with two coats of paint on this piece of furniture and honestly, it looks great. It covered so well um, and it's low VOC so I could paint it inside. We got a gallon of it, but we probably only used like a fifth of it because it's such like muddy consistency. It's such a unique paint. You don't need to put a top coat on it. It's kind of crazy stuff. So we decided to leave this piece of furniture here to stage it and take a photo of it instead of moving it over to our pink mural wall, mostly because it's really heavy and it looks really good in this room. So. Um, I'm gonna be doing that. I kind of staged it with some cute little things. We bought this piece for $40. We spent another 20 in some paint supplies. Um, so we have 60 into it and I'm gonna list it for 250, which would give us a $190 profit. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some photos of this and get this thing listed on Facebook Marketplace. Green shirt. <laughs> I've unloaded. Many a refrigerator in my day, <laughs> so I know how to do it by myself. <laughs> Thanks for your help. You're welcome. <laughs> 
Uh, so this piece we found for $60 on Facebook Marketplace, and we knew it was a really good deal, so we drove about 45 minutes to go pick it up. Um, this thing is really heavy, so our original plan was just to tip it off the truck and take a nice picture of it in the garage. Um, but we did that and it sat for about three to four days. So we decided just to be tough and move it into our house and put it in front of our nice wall and take a nice photo. And within a half an hour of uploading that photo, we had someone offer to come get it for $200. So we knew this would be a quality piece because it was solid wood and it didn't really have any scratches on it. And it also has those cool mid-century legs. And when you open it up, you can just tell it was really well taken care of. It has these cool drawers. We kind of had to be first in line to go get it. And we're glad we were in the right place at the right time. So this is just another example of a really simple piece of furniture to flip. Uh, we didn't have to do any crazy DIY projects to it or anything. We just found it at a good price and took a nice photo and made it look its best. Uh, this particular piece just took a little extra muscle to uh, move it around. So with a sale price of $200, that'll give us $140 profit. Here, come check this out. Wait. It's gonna be a good one, guys. Let's check them out. All right. So How much do you think they are? I don't Five. know. It's a little dirty on that one, but yeah. 15 bucks. Each? Look how pretty these legs are. So these gold ones right here are definitely going to be our money maker for today. Um, we spent $15 a piece on them and I think we can probably sell the pair for $250. So that's a $230 profit. So what we're going to do is our favorite trick. We're going to rip these skirts off. See those nice legs underneath? So it'll look a lot more modern. So a lot of times under these old chairs there's those really cool legs. So if you ripped off these skirts, there's a nice seam underneath. You don't have to do any sewing or anything like that. Um, you rip it off and then it looks like a really cool mid-century modern chair. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna rip those off, um, clean them up really nice with the steam cleaner, um, get them smelling nice and fresh, but these are, look like they're in pretty good shape. Yeah! So these are coming off decently easy, but you'll see there's a lot of these staples left behind, so I'll have to go through and pull those at the end. So it's a little more work, but check out those legs. This thing is awesome. We just recently got this, and we got the pet stain one because we have a dog. But this thing works so good, and it smells really good. Like, I know I'm getting it sanitized. If you guys want to clean anything in your house, definitely recommend these. These are awesome. We'll link the one we have below so you can check it out, but these are sweet. Alright. This tool is the bomb. I've pulled probably 20,000 staples with this guy when we used to flip houses. I think it's like $7 on Amazon. So if you have anything that needs to be pulled staples, this guy is your friend. So these chairs were definitely our good score from this haul. Um, we got these for $15 a piece from the ReStore. We cleaned them up, they turned out awesome. Um, I think we're gonna list them between 250 and 300 for the pair. Um, I think someone will really love them. They're a really trendy color. They're definitely just, they're kind of a cool shape. I really love them. I wouldn't mind keeping them, which I know I say that every time, but I think someone will really love these. I think it's new from Target. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> what? They put it out by the road. They wanted me to take it. What'd you just do? I took a free piece of furniture and put it in our trunk. Are you a dumpster diver now? Stop, it was cool. Today we're gonna flip these two chairs we found for free. Um, we're gonna show you how we flipped them and how much we made. So you guys are probably wondering how we got this free chair that's brand new from Target on the side of the road. Um, I think this actually came from someone who does pallet flips. And the problem with it is that it's really wiggly. So it's kind of broken. 
But luckily, I have a husband who knows all about screws and things. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> okay. That's not what I meant. So luckily, I have a husband who is very handy and can fix this. Um, there's a few other little issues with it we're going to have to kind of take care of. But this chair actually retails for $200 from Target. And like I said, it's literally brand new, like never been used. Um, we just have to make sure that it works really well and then we'll see what we can get for it. So I'm guessing whoever put this out by the side of the road um, didn't have the right screws for it and didn't really feel like messing with it because like I said, I think they are pallet liquidators. They probably have tons of different furniture and they were just like, this isn't worth our time. So they put it out on the side of the road and we were just in the right place at the right time and we snagged it. Um, so I went to Lowe's and I was able to find um, some screws that matched the length and the width. So I think they're gonna work good. Um, and then I also found these wood caps. Uh, if you look at the side, there's a few uh, missing caps. Um, so I just thought I would replace all of them and then either see how it looks or match the stain if it looks kind of off. But it should be really easy. There's only six screws. I think it's gonna only take me about 10 minutes. Yep. Moment of truth, let's see if it holds weight. <laughs> hey. Yee! Ooh, it's cozy too. Does it feel sturdy? Yeah. Ooh, it kind of leans back. Yeah, let's keep this thing. That's nice. Sweet. So now that we got these plugs glued in, um, I'm gonna go over them with a really dark brown stain. Um, I'm also gonna touch up this spot right here that was damaged um, just to uh, make it match a little bit better. We still will make a note of it on the listing, but it's gonna look a whole lot better. And I think someone's gonna be willing to overlook it. So I'm just dabbing it on and then I'm gonna wipe off the excess. The finished wood does not soak up the stain, so I'm not worried about getting the stain on it. So I go back and wipe up the extra. Boom, looks brand new. I think that was the easiest flip we've ever done. Um, all I had to do was go to Lowe's, get a couple screws for $2, um, and we have a brand new chair here. It went from being a broken wobbly chair to being solid. Um, and then these uh, caps I put on stained perfectly. It looks like um, it was meant to be. We are gonna disclose that this was from a pallet of returned merchandise, um, but we're also gonna say that it retails at 200 and we're asking 125 for it. So I think it's gonna be a pretty good value for someone and I think it'll sell really quickly. This lovely chair was just posted for free on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, Sarah just happened to be first in line, so that's how we got it. Uh, but once I got there and realized how nasty this chair was, I realized that maybe I wasn't so lucky. You have no idea the depths I had to go to to get this thing. It was literally in a basement. I had to shove it through this small opening and it was a lot grosser in person than it looked in the picture. After I was carrying it up and I got it outside, I realized how nasty it was, but you can kind of see it's real gross. But it was free. And it has that cool swivel rocker that Sarah loves and it's kind of that has a cool pink color to it. So um, once we rip the skirt off, I think it's going to look cool. All right, so we just take our vice grips and start ripping. It's pretty easy. You've seen this in other videos, I'm sure, but. Oh. See, told you. Easy. It's my fastest one ever. All right, and just like that, you can see already, it's gonna look pretty cool if we can get it clean. So, uh, but I think we can. Yep. <laughs> so we decided to invest in a steam cleaner. Um, it has an attachment for upholstery. So I really think this is our only option for this particular piece. I think it would take a ton of chemicals and paper towel and it would just be a total waste. I think the only hope in reviving this chair is through the steam cleaner. So. Um, we're gonna give it a try and see how it works. And if you're looking to level up your furniture flipping game, we'll link it down below so you can see where we got it. But um, Bissell, which is hometown vacuum, made in Grand Rapids, pretty cool. All right, so we're gonna see how this thing works. It had really awesome reviews, so we'll see if it holds up. So we've been going at this for about 20 minutes now and it's starting to look awesome. This thing works so good because this chair was really gross it's not perfect but it definitely is looking a lot better and i feel a lot better about giving someone something that's been really cleaned well so we're going to go ahead and finish this up and then we'll show you the finished product 
So we ended up cleaning up this chair and it turned out awesome. If you can see the before and after, it's a huge difference. It definitely still has some imperfections because it, it was a really old, dirty chair, but at least now it's really been cleaned really well. Um, I think we're gonna ask 80 for this one. Um, normally we would ask maybe 125 for this kind of chair, but because there are still some imperfections, we couldn't get it quite perfect. We don't feel comfortable asking that much for it. So we're gonna ask 80 for it, and I think we'll be able to get rid of it really quickly. We want people to be able to envision them in their homes. So we like to use this wall in our house. It has some nice greenery, kind of keep it nice and simple. It has nice window light, so we really just make it look its best. The photos that we actually take of this, we will try to show all the imperfections and be as honest as we can, um, but we don't actually edit our photos at all, but we'll still take a really nice photo of it. So we were out just driving around today with the girls and we happened upon an estate sale, a really big one, so we stopped and she was actually closing up. So she gave us these for $10 a piece, so we paid $20 for them, but they're in really bad shape. Like the gold is really starting to deteriorate on it. The fabric's pretty dirty, so we're gonna have to clean them up and I think we're gonna actually sand this down and paint it again. Um, but the shape of the chairs is awesome. That's what we really liked about them. And then we're gonna do this really cool trick we saw that Lone Fox did, we'll link his below, where he actually used paint with fabric softener and painted chairs to make them look like leather. I have no idea if it's gonna work. His turned out awesome. We'll see how we do. So I think it's gonna be a really cool transformation and then when it's done, we're gonna go ahead and sell these and see what we can get for them. So we're gonna get started by cleaning these up and then Jamie's gonna sand down the gold and then we're gonna paint that first and then we have to tape that off to paint the actual leather part on. So we're gonna get started with the gold paint first. All right, so before we paint these, I'm just gonna take a quick uh, round of sanding to it. I'm just gonna use 220 grit. A lot of the shiny surface is already pretty damaged, but I'm just gonna rough up the rest of it so that the spray paint will stick really nice to it. Jamie just finished sanding these, so now I'm gonna go ahead and paint them with our trusty pure gold Rust-Oleum paint. So we just finished painting the metal on these chairs gold. Um, so we're ready to paint on the leather look. Um, it actually requires three different paint colors because you have to do some like shading. I'll write down below what colors I chose. I actually just did exactly what Lone Fox did because um, his chair was beautiful. So definitely check his video out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is mix half of this paint mixture with half fabric softener. So I'm gonna do two ounces of each. Um, and it creates a really weird consistency. And then that's what's gonna cause it to be nice soft leather, I think, supposedly. And then I'm also gonna have a spray bottle with water mixed with fabric softener to get the chair wet. So let's see how this goes. Ruby called this one poop colored. <laughs> so it's gonna be beautiful. All right, I bought the off-brand fabric softener. That does not, okay. Ooh, ooh. Okay, that's good. Perfect, I'm sure. Let's stir it up. Check it out. Uh oh. It's kind of blue looking. Uh oh. You supposed to use blue fabric softener? Is there white? I don't know. Oh no. I think most fabric softeners are blue. I think his might have been white though. Hold on, I think it might be coming through. Hey, perfect. Well, I don't know. I'm just gonna dump it. There we go. All right. Apparently there's a paint shortage. I had to go to two stores to get this and all they had left was eggshells, so hopefully that's okay. All right, what's the verdict? I'm not feeling great about this. It doesn't look like leather. I mean, I'll keep trying, but I don't like it so far. Well, don't you have to do all the other colors still? Yeah, but... I don't know. Is it just not going, maybe thicker you have to put it on? I don't, I put it on super thick. I used like a ton of, probably half of it on this one little cushion. Hmm. Did you say what brand fabric softener you used? He used Downy. Oh, you didn't buy Downy? I didn't want to spend the extra $3. I had such high hopes. I'm starting to give up. I don't look like leather. I started to panic because it's not looking so great. So I did some research and I found some other people who have done it with sandpaper to kind of smooth it out. So 
I'm gonna do that. I think it's gonna take a lot more coats and a lot more paint than I thought. I thought a sample was gonna be enough, but that wasn't even enough for one coat. So I'm gonna try sanding it and doing another coat. It's not feeling like leather yet, um, but hopefully as time goes on, it will. All right, so Sarah just about gave up on this project last night. Um, so I decided to take over for her this afternoon. Uh, the frustrating thing is that the paint just soaked right into the fabric. I have something I like to call a redneck hair dryer. I'm going to use <laughs> between each coat, so hopefully I can dry it quickly and get it done before the girls get home. It also has been using way more paint than we expected, so I had to go back to Lowe's and get a full gallon of the main color. Um, so the plan is after this coat is dry, just to take a piece of sandpaper and knock down all the fabric fibers. And then hopefully after several layers of paint, it'll cover it completely and it'll look like leather. It seemed to work for the other channels that have done this, so uh, we're gonna try it. All right, so unless you're from the Midwest, you probably have not seen one of these before. Uh, but basically it's a heater to heat up a large room in the winter time. There's also other uses. Uh, it could dry your hair if you have wet hair, or maybe even dry furniture that you've painted. So. Uh, we're going to give it a try. Hopefully it can dry these chairs quickly. All right, so I'm really glad I used that heater. It only took about 40 minutes for these to completely dry, so I can start my next coat. You can tell this one has two coats on it already, um, and it already looks a little bit smoother than this one. This one is still pretty rough. Um, it just looks like painted fabric. So. Uh, I'm going to basically just keep sanding in between coats and hopefully I can get a few more on today. So after about seven coats of paint, Jamie put on these yesterday, a torrential downpour came, we brought them inside. It's kind of been a terrible project. Um, I don't know why people, when you see these projects on YouTube, they look so easy. This one was not easy. And I'm going to be honest with you guys and tell you that. So if you want to do it yourself, I'm not sure this is a great way to flip furniture to make money. It is a cool way to do furniture if you want a leather looking piece for your house. I would say these are looking more like vinyl than leather. I'm going to start doing the shading here shortly. So hopefully that shading makes it look a little more leather-esque. But I'll share with you guys how I do all that. It's kind of just like blending it all together. So this is how we're gonna do this. I have three paint colors. This is the main color. It's called Cafe Meal by Valspar. Um, that is the color that Jamie put seven coats on. Uh, we used almost like two thirds of a gallon. I bought a sample originally and clearly wasn't enough. These two I did buy just samples and that was enough. So these are what we are gonna use for shading. So this middle color is Natural Cork by Valspar. Um, and so that's gonna go into the shadows and kind of blending in. I'll show you what I'm gonna do here. And then the darkest color is called Cowboy Boots by Valspar. And that's gonna go really deep in the creases. And then I'm gonna kind of just blend it all together, just kind of creating those natural highlights and shadows. Um, so that's how we're gonna do it. It's not an exact science. I'm not an artist. Um, I'm hoping it's kind of like therapeutic and fun. I think it'll be good. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm gonna get started with and show you how I do that. All right, so I just finished this one. It's still really wet, but you can kind of see the difference that the shading is making here. It's, it's making it just look a little more real and like leather. It's darkening it up a bit. So we're gonna get it dry and that one should be done. We're gonna peel off the tape and hopefully it looks good. I'm gonna start working on this one now. So I'm gonna show you guys what I did. I kind of did a practice run there. All right, so I'm gonna start by getting it all wet with my original color. It doesn't really need another coat, Lord knows, but it helps kind of blend it all together when I bring in my darker colors. So we're just getting it wet here. And because of the fabric softener, it really stays wet for a long time. Can you see what I'm doing? <laughs> So now I'm bringing in my um, middle color, my like medium color brown, 
And I'm gonna put this where all the shadows would be or all the creases. Okay. Because it's so wet, it's pretty forgiving. I personally like this medium brown color a lot better than the light. So I'm kind of adding in a lot and kind of mixing it all together. I don't think it's an exact science. It's just kind of what you like. So we're gonna do that. And then just make sure you're getting rid of brush strokes and kind of bringing it all together. So anywhere where there would be a shadow, so anywhere where lines kind of move downward, that's where I'm putting the darker. So now this very last color is this dark color that we're gonna do a little bit less of and just really in the creases there. Can you guys see that? So this is creating that darkest, deepest shadow. So I don't wanna bring this dark color out too much. So I'm gonna go back and get my medium brush to kind of blend it. I think this is gonna be pretty, I don't know. So you guys kind of get the idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up in all the creases and we'll see the final product once it dries in like 24 hours. 24 hours later. So after I did all the shading on these chairs, I'm really happy with how they turned out. I was a little bit leery there in the middle as they were actually gonna be cool, but the shading really did make them look like leather. You guys saw that I kind of blended it all in in the creases, and that just helped it give that nice patina look. Um, yeah, so these turned out really great. We paid $20 a piece for these chairs. We have another $50 in materials because we used a lot of paint, um, but they are pending right now for 200 so. $130 profit. So we are on our way to go get two TV stands. I found them from a different guy who does palette flips. They're brand new from Wayfair. They're mid-century, they're really cool. We got them for 50 bucks a piece and they are valued around 300. A so piece. a piece. Woo. We won't be able to get that because they're not from the site, but we can definitely take a nice photo of them and I'm thinking 150 a piece. So sweet. pretty sweet deal. So we're heading up there now and we'll show you guys what we got. Which one should we open first? So this one looks not damaged. This one I'm not so sure about. So we're gonna do a little bit of an unboxing to see if it actually is in okay shape. So let's open it. So with these palette deals, you really never know what you're gonna get. So if you buy anything from a palette, I don't think they have like a return policy. So you kind of, it's a gamble for sure. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Hey, Wow, that's pretty cute. Hey, that's pretty good. No broken pieces yet that I see. Yeah. Let's see. It looks pretty intact. Good. What do you think? Wait, it looks good to me. We'll have to see if there's anything actually missing. That's also a big possibility, but it's pretty cool little piece. I like it. All right, so we got this all out of the box and I see a couple things I like. One, there's no broken pieces, and then two, there's not that many parts. I'm hoping there's none missing, but if you guys have ever installed IKEA furniture before, you know that the more parts, the more of a headache you have. So I don't think it's gonna be too bad. What do you think? Pretty sweet. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. These legs don't seem like the original legs. Um, they're not flat on the bottom. They look good to me. Ooh. That's so pretty. So I'm about a half an hour in and I've actually made some pretty good progress. Um, I've done a few of these before, so I kind of know what I'm doing, but um, there's still kind of a process to put together. So um, hopefully another half an hour and I'll be done. How's it going? Good, what do you think? Sweet. Can I get the final picture there? Yeah. What are you on the stage at? Mm. Yeah, that's a good question. Because it's, it's short, you mean? Yeah. Be really good for like a record player. Oh yeah, that's true. I like that. Alright guys, so just as a reminder, we bought this from someone who liquidates pallets and they sell individual pieces. 
I was able to score this one for $50. It was brand new in box. It's from Wayfair. It retails for $243. Um, it's got really cool mid-century legs on it. It's got some nice design. It's really low to the ground, so it's probably going to be somebody's TV stand, which those typically aren't nearly as desirable as like something that's a little higher for like a hutch in a kitchen or a credenza. So we're going to list this at $180 which is definitely a lot cheaper than the 243 price tag on Wayfair. We'll see if we can get that. If we can't, we might have to lower it to 150, but we're gonna start off high and just be patient. So we've gotten several comments from people who are a little leery about bringing old furniture into their house, um, but you can still flip furniture without having to deal with some of that old stuff. So really what we got paid for here is to basically build the furniture. That's all we did. So pick it up, build it, take a nice picture and sell it. So there's ways to flip furniture without having to get really the old nasty stuff. All right, so we're on to hutch number two. We're gonna open this one and see if everything's there and if everything's intact. So I'm actually more excited about this hutch than the other one. So let's open her up and see what we got. Looks pretty good, looks perfect to me. Doesn't look like it's been opened at all. Yeah, so someone probably just decided they didn't want it and returned it. Pretty yes. cool. Yeah. It's nice. Kind of farmhouse like That's the end, right? That's not the door. Oh, is it? Yeah, because it was the wicker, right? Um. So I just finished taking all this stuff out and laying it out ready to build it, and I realized that it's actually the wrong one. So she, when she loaded it in our car yesterday at the pallet place, she gave us the wrong one and I'm super bummed because the other one was definitely worth a lot more. So we're actually, I talked to her and she said she was really sorry, it was just an honest mistake. Um, we're gonna bring this one back and exchange it um, and go back and get the other one. So I have to box all this back up and go do that. So it's a little bit of a hiccup. That's kind of the name of the game with this pallet stuff is like just weird stuff kind of happens with it. So we're gonna go take care of that and go get the other one. All right, here we go, right here. Whoa. Yeah. I'm strong. Round two, here we go. Wait, are you sure this is the right one? <laughs> let's hope so. We just returned the other one. Now we got the right one home. So let's just hope it's not broken. Let's see. Right. It looks like this one has definitely been returned. The other one was not as disheveled. Our screws, that's good. Right. Oh. It's like a little dent there. This one looks kind of stained or something. Just like a weird oh, discoloration, yeah. I don't know. Hmm. This is definitely not wicker like the picture looked. It's like a burlap on wood. It still is cool, but maybe not quite as trendy as I was hoping. All right, so we just finished unboxing the new TV stand from the one that we returned. Um, and it looks in pretty good shape. There was one little defect, um, but I think it's fixable. The one kind of disappointing thing is that it's not actually cane like the photo looked. It's like a burlap sack material. Um, it still is pretty cool. I think it's still gonna be desirable and trendy, maybe just not quite as trendy as the cane. This piece I'm excited about because it's a lot taller than a TV stand typically is. So it can definitely go in like a dining room or a kitchen. Um, so it's a lot more versatile of a piece. And so that way I think we can actually get more for it than the other TV stand. So let's get to work. Right here. So then right there we go. They go this way or upside down like this? All right, so this shelf was the only damaged part of the whole thing. You can see there's a little mark right there, um, but it was a little separated too. So all I did was Took a little L bracket I had, or actually a tiny little hinge I had, and attached it on the bottom to, to draw that in. Um, and now it looks brand new. So pretty simple fix, and I think um, no one's even gonna notice, so. So we are super glad that we returned the other one and did this one, because we think this one is a lot cooler. So its retail value is $300, so I think we're gonna ask $220 for it. It's in perfect shape and we put it all together for somebody. So that's what we're gonna ask for it. If we can sell this one for 220 with the other TV stand that we sold for 180, uh, that will be $400, which is a $300 profit. So this cabinet we bought for $20 from a thrift store. It's rattan, which is super trendy right now, but it's a little bit beat up and it's been painted. We're gonna go ahead and paint it back to its original rattan color, which is 
um, kind of like this nutmeg color. This is a trick we've shown in other videos to make it look more original. We're also gonna take off these handles and the wheels and spray paint those gold just to get them to look nice and trendy and fresh and new. So yeah, we'll go ahead and do that and we'll market this as a bar cart. We'll kind of stage it really nice in our home to make it look its best. Um, and we're gonna ask between 80 and $100 for it, which will give us a nice little profit. <laughs> Lazy man screwdriver. <laughs> Look at that, it works. <laughs> I ended up spending about $15 in spray paint. It took a lot of paint to cover this. Um, but it turned out pretty cute. I painted the handles gold. We painted the wheels gold as well, which Jamie isn't the biggest fan of, but I think they look cute. So I have about $35 into this piece. I listed it for hundred and I actually have someone coming right now to pick this up. So that is a $65 profit. So not bad for just a quick little spray paint job. You like it? 40 bucks. Sweet. The velvet's like in perfect shape. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you, thrift store. Uh, so this is the kind of furniture I like flipping, the kind where you don't have to do any work. Sarah loves these yellow velvet or orange velvet chairs, um, and they always are slam dunk for us. We always make a lot of money on them. So uh, we paid $40 for this chair. Uh, we brought it home, and we're just going to do a light spot cleaning on it. It was pretty nice and clean. Uh, and we're going to relist it for 100 I think we'll sell it really quickly. Yeah, so those orange velvet, yellow velvet chairs go really quickly. So if you ever see them, pick them up. Let's do a poll, actually. Is that orange or yellow, you think? I think it's yellow. I think it's yellow, too, but in camera it kind of looks orange. Oh. All right, this one we paid $20 for. Uh, it's definitely a little less quality of a piece. It's just a veneer and it's pretty banged up. So uh, we're gonna paint it that same green color and I think it's gonna really look a lot better, a lot nicer. Um, and then we're gonna also put it on legs because it's awkwardly short, as you can tell already. So we're gonna start by cleaning this one up and then I'm actually gonna have to build a plywood base for it um, and then we'll put the legs on. So let's get started. All right, so I'm out in the garage starting to take a look at this other cabinet we bought. Um, our original plan was to put a piece of plywood on the bottom uh, right here and then add legs to the bottom like this so it would be considered a credenza. But it's kind of awkward down here um, and it'd have to build extra supports and all that. And I still don't think it would end up looking very pro. I think it would kind of look hodgepodgey. So we decided to actually take off this bottom piece of trim here, go all the way down to here. It'll simplify it, um, but it'll also shorten it a little bit. So we can no longer call it a credenza. I think it's going to be just a TV stand. Uh, it'll still look really cool. I think we'll be able to get but still between 150 and 200 for it. So let's get started. All right, so now that we have this panel cut off, I bought a trim piece to go over the edge right here. Um, so I'm gonna cut that next and put it on. It'll just give it a nice professional finished look. So I'm gonna do that and then I also realized I have to put a mounting plate for the legs. Um, I wasn't anticipating having to do that, but I have a scrap piece from our kitchen remodel. Uh, so I'm gonna basically just mount it there on the bottom uh, and then mount the legs to that. So that'll keep it uh, really sturdy and it'll hold a lot of weight that way. So now that I got these base pieces installed, I'm just going to um, glue on my trim like this um, and then flip it upside down and put the plates in for the legs. I'm always pre-drilling too with this hardwood, otherwise it'll split. So um, yeah, so we're almost done. All right, I'm to the final step before paint, which is putting the legs on. Um, so we bought these legs off Amazon. We'll link them below, but uh, they're pretty easy to install. You just have to first screw a metal plate to the wooden leg and then screw the leg down to uh, my cabinet. So pretty straightforward. I'm mounting these plates about an inch off the edge and then uh, three inches in from the side. So they will start in the center of the cabinet, but since they're angled, they'll end up right near the edge. So I think it'll end up looking really cool. So uh, I'm going to get to pre-drilling these holes and getting the screws on. 
Okay, so now I'm just gonna screw it into my cabinet. Okay, one thing I'm now noticing is that because they didn't put uh, the hole marks on the top, uh, this is actually a little bit uh, twisted, so I have to mount the plate a little crooked uh, in order for it to look straight from the outside. All right, time to bring it inside. All right, so this thing is already looking a lot cooler than it did before. Uh, those legs really made it pop. Uh, so what we're gonna do is just paint all the veneer green. Uh, we're gonna leave those the natural wood. Uh, it's gonna turn out really cool, but we're gonna definitely be putting that Beyond Paint to the test to see how it adheres to this veneer. This white trim is the only evidence that we cut off the bottom. Um, and it looks kind of out of place right now, but once we get it painted green, it's gonna blend right in and look like it was on purpose. So let's get to painting. All right, so I did have to do one extra coat of paint just to make sure and cover that veneer. Uh, it turned out great though. So just as a reminder, we paid $20 for this cabinet. Uh, we have another $20 to $30 into supplies. So even if I sell this for $150, that's still gonna give us a $100 profit. I might be able to get more than $150 though. I'm gonna start maybe around $180 to $200 and see if I can get that. But if not, we'll just lower it to $150. I'm also gonna link these legs below. They're just from Amazon, but um, the angled look to them is really cool and they're pretty inexpensive. All right, I'm gonna get this thing listed and hopefully we can get at least $150 for it. So Target has been selling these cabinets for a very long time. You can buy this exact one right now on their site for $230, um, but they've been selling them for years. So I actually see this cabinet on Marketplace all the time. I bought this one for $40. It actually, I think originally was white. They painted it yellow, um, but we're going to paint it black and then we're gonna add in some cane. But we've done other pieces where we break out the glass and then we replace it with cane and we've been able to sell it for a really big profit. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna paint it all black, really nice and sleek looking. Um, replace, we're gonna take out these bars right here and then replace this all with cane. I've actually seen this piece on Pinterest before. I believe it's from Angela Rose Home. Um, she's done one very similar and that's where I originally got the idea. We're gonna take out this grid right here so that when we put in our cane, it's just a nice clean uh, rectangle. So, oh. One's already broken. So since the glass was already out of this piece, these come out really easily. They're just kind of glued in by Target. I'm afraid I'm gonna... Oh, got it. <laughs> cool. Cool, Target, cool. Wow. Oh my word, that's real wood though. That was easy, let's get to painting. We picked this up from Lowe's. It's a chalky finish, tintable paint. We chose a deep black, which I'm really excited about. Um, they can do any color, I believe. So you actually just pick this and you tint it to the color of your choosing. So that's what we did. It's Krylon, Krylon. That's the brand, it's from Lowe's. Um, and then we actually bought a paint sprayer from Harbor Freight, just like a little mini guy that we're gonna try out for the first time. Um, I didn't love how it looked last time when I brushed chalk paint on. I didn't like seeing the brush look. So we're gonna use a paint sprayer to put this on so that it has that really nice finish. And then we're gonna put on the clear wax, which helps it not chip. So I've painted a lot of things over the years and I've gotten a little bit tired of it. So um, for this project, I decided to make a purchase that hopefully will make it easier. I decided to buy a paint sprayer for my air compressor. The one thing you have to do if you're gonna do this is thin down your paint. So I'm not sure if that's gonna ruin the chalk paint or not, but we're gonna give it a try because I think it'll make it a lot easier and a lot faster. So I just finished the first coat and let me tell you, I'm super impressed by that tool I bought. It's only 25 bucks, but it saved me a ton of time and it actually looks way better than doing it with a brush. So I can't wait to show Sarah. She's gonna really love it, I think. Sweet. Huh? Looks so good. Do a little bit of touch up, but. Yeah, it looks good. So next we're gonna go ahead and clear coat this with that wax that you put on top of chalk paint. Um, so it'll get nice and shiny and just look really finished and we'll also protect it so it doesn't scratch up at all. 
But that spray gun we got, like, that worked awesome. Definitely, if you have a air compressor, it's like a pneumatic spray gun where you can put any kind of paint in it. It's just like a tiny little guy. I think, what did we pay, 30 bucks for it? Yeah, like 25 bucks, yeah. So, pretty awesome. So we'll link that below if you guys are interested in one of those, if you like painting furniture as well. We personally have not really been flipping any of our grandma chairs lately because every time we go to a thrift store, they are gone. So I don't know if that trend's catching on. I, I definitely see them on Marketplace like all the time with the skirts ripped off and I can't find them anymore, especially not for a good price. So this is our next um, hack that we think is gonna be big that you can make money on. It's a little more work than flipping chairs because you do have to cane it and buy that cane so it's a little more materials, but I think the profit margins can be really good on these. I got my cane. Took a good while to get here. So I ordered this from onlinefabricstore.net. This is 24 inch cane. I think it's, I ordered 10 feet of it. So it gets a little cheaper the more you order of it. And I think it still is like $11 a square or a foot. It's a little pricey, but I've even had people actually ask me about these pieces that I've sold in the past. Like if you ever sell another one, please keep me in mind. So I think that this is definitely gonna be really popular, but if you wanna get into it, order a lot of cane because it takes a little while to come and you can get it cheaper if you order a lot of it. So that's what I did. This is how we do it. So we're gonna measure, we took out the glass already, as you can see, and we're gonna measure these indents in here because that's where we're gonna staple it in. Make sure you're getting nice and shallow staples. So I'm gonna measure from here to here. Okay, so it's about nine and a quarter, so I'm gonna say 10. You add about an inch extra seam allowance, even though you won't need it, just to make sure you have enough. And then this way is 20 inches, so I'm gonna say 21. So 10 by 21 is this piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my cane to those dimensions, and I'm actually gonna soak it in the sink. We have more videos on how to do this correctly um, if you want a little bit more in depth. So by soaking it, we're helping the fibers get nice and loose. And then when we go ahead and staple this on, when it dries again, it'll dry really nice and tight. It's kind of amazing how it works, but it really does pull really good and tight. So. I'm gonna go ahead and get soaking um, my cut pieces and then we're gonna put them in. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and cut right along this line. Oh All right, so now that we have our cane nice and soaked, um, we're just gonna put it uh, right on the back of these doors here, line it up, and then sink staples in. Um, and you want to make sure staples go through every um, reed so that um, it pulls nice and even when it dries. We're using quarter inch staples, so really short staples so that we don't show, shoot through the front of our door. Um, and we did take our door off this time just to make it easier. All right, just like that. So I'm gonna go through and make sure I put staples through every reed. Um, and then it'll pull nice and tight when it dries and we'll show you the finished product. All right, so I use my pneumatic stapler, which is for my air compressor, but you can also do it with one of these handheld ones. Um, so I'll link it below. Uh, but I just finished and now all that I have to do is just cut off the excess with a nice sharp knife and then our door will be finished. So it's a little bit loose as you can see, but once the cane dries, it'll pull nice and tight. All right, it's that easy. That one's finished. All right. So we got these beauties on Amazon. Um, I think I got a pack of 10 of them because I plan on doing more furniture flips in the future. Um, so that way you can save money by buying more of them. Um, so we'll link these ones below. I think they're pretty adorable. It costs like a, less than $2 a piece, so not too bad. And they're gonna look real fly. Look at that, so cute. So the final process of this is to put on this clear sealing wax. We got this one, it's the same chalky finish brand by Krylon, Krylon, Krylon. Yeah. Um, this is just from Lowe's, so that's what we got. And then you get these microfiber cloths to kind of wipe it on and then wipe it off, so to speak. This really just provides a nice finish on it and also protects it so that it doesn't chip. <laughs> So here is our finished product. We're about to post this. We're really happy with how it turned out. So we bought this cabinet for $40 when it was yellow. Um, we painted it black. We have about $50 in supplies between the paint, the cane, 
the handles. So that's about $90 we spent on this whole project, which is a little bit high, but if you were to buy something like this in the store, this cane stuff is so expensive right now. Um, so definitely worth that $90 price point. Um, we don't really need this one in our home, so I think we are gonna flip it. Um, I think I will ask between 200 and 250 for it. We probably spent about three hours on this project. We're getting pretty quick at these, so not too bad, especially because we used that spray gun. It was really fast. So I definitely think you can make money doing these if you wanna get into furniture flipping and you're not able to find those chairs, like we can't find them anywhere anymore. Just look for TV stands or credenzas that have glass in them, and then it's really easy just to pop that cane in um, and you have a really cool project. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. So this white wicker mirror was $25 from one of my favorite thrift stores. Um, I thought that was a little bit steep for it, but I was willing to pay that because it was such a cool shape. Um, and I think I can get 75 for it if I do a really cool trick that my sister showed me, which is actually painting it back to its original rattan color. My sister uses this one. It's called Satin Nutmeg. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape this and paint this up back to its original brown. Um, which is just that trendier color. It's such a cool piece, I think someone would really love it. So that's a little trick in flipping, is to look for that white wicker that no one seems to want right now. Um, it's just a lot cheaper and there's a lot more of it out there. So look for those pieces and then just spray paint it back to that brown. So I got these pieces a while back off Facebook Marketplace. Uh, this green one I paid $25 for, and then this one I paid 40. They're both really big pieces, and after we paint them and cane them and put new legs on them, new handles, I'm, ho I'm hoping to get around $300 a piece for them. So let's get started. So I'm finishing sanding these. We're gonna go ahead and use um, a regular paint this time. We're not using chalk paint, so I need to make sure and sand these really good so it adheres really well. Um, I'm gonna be using my favorite color pink in the world. It's called Mellow Coral by Sherwin-Williams. I've used this in Roxy's bedroom for that arch I painted. I used it on Ruby's door and I've used it in our sunroom and I've had a lot of requests for what this color is and it's like the best color pink ever. We're gonna be breaking the glass out of these doors. Jamie's gonna take these off and bring them into the garage and break that out. And then that's where our cane will be going. Um, and then we always love our gold handles. We just got these off Amazon. Yeah, I put in some wood filler because there was some little cracks and some imperfections in here. So I got that nice and smooth. So for this one over here, we are gonna use this milk paint because I really liked this color. I've never used milk paint before. It's a little different than chalk paint. I'm not super confident in this, but it could be one of those things that we end up loving the effect and how it turns out. Eventually, after we paint these, we're gonna take the bottom trim off and add nice mid-century legs to this one. That one, we're gonna leave these legs on because they're kind of these chunky, cute little legs that I actually really like and I think will look adorable with the paint. So I'm using the screwdriver like a caveman because Jamie brought all of our tools up to the Airstream. So like our drill and our paint sprayer and everything is not here. So we are actually going to be rolling this with brushes and actual rollers. Um, but you can still get the job done. It just takes a little longer. So even if you don't have fancy tools, you can still flip furniture. I decided I'm gonna keep these handles. I might paint them a little bit better gold um, that I like, but they're kind of rounded, which kind of matches this whole, this piece specifically. It kind of helps just soften it up. I actually think the inside of this cabinet is a really pretty color. It's like that terracotta color that's really popular right now. So if I can make it look nice and have clean edges, I think I'll keep the inside this color and the outside pink, and it'll kind of go with that like deserty tone that I like already. So I think I'm gonna try that and see how it looks. So that'll save me a little bit of time too. Go break that glass, buddy. All right, so we're gonna try to pop this glass out without breaking it, uh, cause we don't want a huge mess. Um, so all I have is just this little paint scraper. I'm gonna try to pry the, these little wood pieces out with. Should be pretty easy. Yep. 
So and then I'm going to save these pieces so that when we staple our cane on, we can put the wood back on and it'll have a nice finished look to it. All right, that one is pretty easy. So I'm hopeful the other ones will come out just as easy. So what's so great about these glass front cabinets is that there's already a lip here um, for us to staple the cane into. So it makes the process really quick and simple. So I'm going to be painting this one pink and Jamie's going to be doing this one blue, green. What color is this? Mm, Greenish green, blue? Green. So we'll see who's faster. So let's do it. That's definitely blue, right? I don't know. What do you guys think? Blue or green? Comment below. That's for sure blue. Like there's no, there's no way you could call that green, right? Do you call this green? Yeah, I think it's green. It doesn't look like the picture, so I'm slightly concerned because I don't want this looking like Robin's egg. Yeesh. I hate it. It's the worst. I don't just kind of hate it. I really hate it. It's, Would you agree? It's so ugly. It's like eastery blue. Look at this can. This color, not that color. Sad. So I think we're making the decision. We have some leftover charcoal, which is pretty boring, but it's classic. It's going to look good, but I'm sad. I really wanted to do a fun color. So we're going to start over. I'm keeping the pink. Jamie thinks it's kind of dorky, but I think it'd be really cute in a girl's room. I think it's cute. And then this one's gonna be more like classic black or charcoal. So it can go in like a living room or a dining room. The blue's horrible. It's terrible, it's hideous, I hate it. Much better. Here and then add an inch. Um, and then at the end, we'll go ahead and cut off the excess, but that just allows us to have a nice amount to work with. Um, and then I will go ahead and soak our cane after I cut it in the sink in warm water. Um, and that just allows the fibers to get really nice and loose and it's easy to work with. Otherwise, it's really kind of stiff. And then a really cool thing happens with cane. Once it dries, it will become nice and tight. Um, so it'll be a little bit loose when we first put it on there and it's a little bit damp. But once it dries, it gets like really nice and tight and looks really good. So that's kind of why we get it wet. So we're going to go cut this and give it a bath. So you want to soak it for about 30 minutes to get make sure that the fibers are getting nice and soaked. All right, so next we're going to staple on the cane. Um, we want to make sure and put a staple through every reed. Um, and I'm going to use a short uh, quarter inch staple so it doesn't shoot through the front. Um, but it's a pretty simple process. Once I do these two sides, I'm going to um, do the final two edges and then cut the excess off of the uh, razor blade. So um, we're using this pneumatic stapler, but you can also use um, just a hand one too. I'll show you that. Um, so you can use these two. Well, we'll link one below. These are uh, a little more handy, uh, especially if you don't have an air compressor. Bottom's coming off. What? All right, so this bottom did not come off as easy as pieces in the past, so we're gonna just put it back on and leave it and not do any mid century legs with this one. And probably won't be able to get as much for it, but that's how it goes sometimes. So overall, we're pretty happy with how this piece turned out. We're a little bummed we weren't able to put those mid-century legs on, but it still turned out pretty cool. Um, we decided to stage it here in our dining room with some of our prints. Um, we just thought that the color really suited these photographs and just the decor in this room. We paid $40 for this hutch on Facebook Marketplace, and we have about $50 into supplies. So that's between the handles, the cane, and the paint. Um, so all in for about 90 bucks, and we're hoping to list this piece for 250. So this piece turned out super cute. It's definitely going to be a little bit more of like a niche product. So it doesn't necessarily go in every home, but I think that someone would really love this for like their little girl's room or if they had kind of like a funky sunroom like us. 
Um, something like that. So the pink is a little bit more of a risky choice, but I still think it's super cute. The terracotta on the inside, I love how it turned out. I love like the little peak of color. I think it's really cute. So I'm really happy with that choice. So we bought this piece on Facebook Marketplace for $25. Um, and I have about $25 worth of cane into it. I already had the paint, the handles we just sprayed gold. So we have about $50 all in on this piece. Um, and I think I'm going to ask between $250 and $300 for it. Um, it might take a little bit longer to sell because it is more of like a niche color. So we're going to take some nice photos of it and list this today and hopefully we can sell it to somebody who loves it. All right, so this next item is a white wicker shelf that Sarah came home with one day. She found it for only $10 at Goodwill. But this is something you may have seen in the 90s at your grandma's house, uh, filled with precious moments next to a singing bass on the wall. <laughs> so Sarah's sister had the great idea to just spray paint it back to that original brown color, uh, which we did, and it turned out great. All right, so this wicker piece turned out really well. Uh, we've showed this trick in a few other videos, but basically we just look for a piece of white wicker. Um, those are typically cheaper, not really as trendy right now. Uh, we take them and we spray paint them nutmeg brown, which is just a trick we learned from Sarah's sister. Uh, it makes it look a lot more close to that natural color that's trending right now again. So uh, this piece is especially trendy because it has an arched top on it, if you can see our arched wall here um, that's you know kind of popular and trendy right now so uh, because of that I think this piece will sell really well. We also have it staged nicely with a lot of cute things from our house. I can't take credit for the staging that was mostly Sarah's doing. So we only paid ten dollars for this piece which is great uh, but we have another twenty dollars into spray paint. We had to use four cans because um, there's just a lot of spaces and a lot of white to cover. So we have $30 into it and we're hoping to sell it between $150 and $175. So that'll give us a nice little profit for really not too much work. You know my favorite kind of flips are the flips where you don't have to do anything to it. Uh, but this is a close second because it really didn't take too much work just spraying it on brown. Uh, make sure you wear a respirator because spray paint can get pretty nasty. All right, if you've made it this far in the video, <laughs> hats off to you, congratulations. That's impressive. Maybe you're just waking up from your slumber, but <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. I um, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, Happy New Year, guys. Cheers to... Happy New Year. Well, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Yep, you might be watching this after the Lions lose, so. Okay. See you guys, bye. bye.